Tom Baker's here, hello. Hi. Last time you came on, about two days later, we had sat loads of mail, protest mail, from taxi drivers, because you roundly insulted them, and we had another sat load from, from consultants and their wives, because you insulted consultants. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why that should be. I'm sure I, I wouldn't deliberately hurt anybody. No, I wouldn't, really. Not unless they were able to look after themselves. Well, judging by the mail we got, they, they're certainly capable of doing that. Didn't you get an email at all? I've no, got I didn't no, no, know. no. Because he said that taxi drivers are boring and that consultants were sort of basically evil. Power mad, you said consultants yeah, were. Do you still yeah. think that? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you look a bit like a consultant this morning. Is this, is this from the wardrobe department or is this yours? It's actually, yes, it's from the, it's from the series, yes. Yeah, yeah it look, looks familiar. Yeah. You were just telling me that you don't, um, you only read your script. You don't, you don't look at the whole script when you, when you get a, a script for medics. No, I don't, no, because I think that would be trespassing. I mean, I'm not interested, in actually, in what the other people are doing or saying, you know, because my job is actually to be surprised when they come in. It's quite yeah. difficult to be surprised if you know exactly what they're on about, isn't it? Mm. And you don't watch it either when it's... No, I don't watch it, no, no. So it would be pointless me asking you any questions about the general sort of plot structure and... Uh, well, yes, it would, it. yes. Uh, I, I mean, I might add that there's been an interesting discovery. I suddenly discovered, this is the lovely thing about working in television, mm. is that I have a wife. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, that wife is, is Judy Parfit. This is a great bonus, yes. <laughs> you never knew this until the second series. No, I didn't know. <laughs> That's because I didn't read her bit, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Almost art mirroring life, because you're a believer, you're very happily married, but you're a believer in, um, as is your wife, in, in keeping things separate in, in, in the marital home. Is that right? I mean, you, but you have two separate bathrooms, don't you? Well, yes, we do, but I mean, I don't think it's possible, really, uh, to, be, to have domestic bliss without at least two bathrooms. Mm. I think... There's a limit to how much one wants to see of the person one loves, don't you think? Yeah, well, up to a point, yes. Yes. You need well, a little bit of uh, a little bit of space, as they say. Well, that's right. Yes, yes. And it's nice to meet occasionally. It's, you know, yes. You something. do the Times crossword together at dinner, don't you? Yes, we do. Well, I mean, that's so that we don't have to talk to each other, you know, because I mean, um, we don't want to tamper with it, you know. Yes. I look at her and she looks at me. And she's very devoted to me. Well, that's nice. Yes, nice yeah. for me. Yes. It's a sort of minimalist relationship, isn't it? Well, no, no, it's, no it, it's very maximum. Because, I mean, we do have afternoons, you know, when mm. we're both at home, because my wife works from home, yes. yes. Uh, anyway. And that's when you talk and... Yes, that's right, talk yes. And we talk about cats and stuff like that. Yes, yes. you have a passion for cats yes, and dickens, do. don't yes. you? Yes, both Cats, of you. dickens, yes. violence. Depression, all those subjects, you know, that happily married people are obsessed with. Really. It sounds fun. Two, two till four at, uh, at, your, at your household. Um, I didn't know last time we spoke, I should have done, but I didn't, that, that you spent, was it six years training to be a monk? That's right, yes. W where was that? In some sort of forgotten island somewhere? Well, no, it was in Jersey, actually, uh, but I mean, it's a very long story. No, it was just that, at the, uh, well, it, it's just that as a child, because I come from a deeply religious background, mm. And therefore, we were obsessed with sex, violence, treachery, and murder. Um, I wanted to become a victim. I've always had a kind of streak of the victim in me, mm. which, of course, goes with a religious impulse, really. Yes, denial. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And so, having nothing better to do and not being very clever at school, I wanted to be a hero and a martyr. And so I signed up, and off I went, uh, full of poverty, chastity, and obedience. How old were you then? Fifteen. And you stayed until you were, what, 20, 21. 21. Yeah. Was it hell? Oh no no no! It was it was marvelous. Uh, sometimes it was hell, but sometimes it was sometimes it was heaven. You know, but enough's enough. Really. What did you miss? What did you miss most? Well, I missed. Uh, I suppose I, I discovered very suddenly that I was uh, missing sex terribly. Oh, you would. Uh, yeah, it was an awful thing. To, I had to walk in a peculiar way because, of course, I was in a state of priapic euphoria. If you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, I also missed rather good food, and I missed my mother. Um, that's right, and I missed also. I missed a degree of independence. You know, being kicked around all the time. Mm. Mm. Whenever you go into any kind of big outfit like monasticism, the first thing you've got to give up is your will. You know, people say you do what you're told. Yeah, you must, in other words, be a victim. Really. I can't imagine you being like that. Well, there you are. I've come on a bit. So, so at 21, you left. What did you do? Did you go to the to the senior? Well, I went there? to the army then. I had to yeah. go in the army because of the. Um, because of national service and then from the army and to, uh, to drama school. Sorry, were monks, I thought monks were exempt from national service. They were. But, but when I that came was out, your way out, when I you see. came out, yes. you were no longer exempt. Yes. Yeah. Was it left any marks on you at all? Because you went on to play Rasputin, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, appropriate, the mad monk. I mean. Well, I mean, I'm still a kind of uh, masochistic in a way. I was watching, uh, I was trying to watch, what do you call it, A Year in Provence, 
Well, it was doing it in the kitchen, standing up. I mean, you couldn't possibly sit down and watch that. You'd go into a coma. <laughs> to, even, to avoid going into a coma, I found myself doing what we used to do in the monastery, which was not lacerating myself. We had, in the kitchen, there was a kind of um, one of those for making kebabs, a, a skewer. skewer. Yeah, skewer, yes. And to get through a year in Provence, I kept having to stab myself with a skewer. Oh, cruel. To cruel. stay awake. Yeah. What's wrong with it? I don't understand. It's a, it's a super book and it's and John Thor's an excellent... Well, it's not violent, really. Do you think so? John Thor, yes, I do. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's not violent enough. It's not, there's no irony. It's just plain... I, I keep, keep longing for some demented Frenchman to come on, you know, mm. and poison Morse and his missus. <laughs> with something like curare. I think curare is a kind of uh, poison that makes your back arch, the pain is so exquisite. And when you die, you're in a complete circle, so they have to build you a circular coffin, <laughs> which they then <laughs> wheel down. Brain, yeah, yes. yeah. Well, unlike uh, A Year in Provence, Medics is going well, se second series, but y yeah. again, you wouldn't know because you, you, don't, you don't watch it. No, but, but I mean, people do talk to me a lot, and they ask my opinion. I'm consulted a lot in my village, especially since <laughs> I've got my suit on. Yeah? <laughs> and, and and you and you still play play the consultant as the arrogant. Um, well, I mean, I don't see it like that at all. I mean, I see myself as rather a benevolent sort of fellow, and mm. uh, and in the village, you know, and I go around blessing babies and smiling at people and generally encouraging people to, you know, keep their peckers up. Um, you know, I feel as if I'm being na good neighbourly and uh, and kind. Mm. And uh, what, what I like about you, we discussed this last time, so I won't go into it again, is that you have no resentment of, of, of your success and the lasting sort of image of Doctor Who. I mean, you love all that, don't you? you, sort of, you well, I mean, I liked it. Aren't? I liked it, and, 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 and it, it will never co completely evaporate, yeah. because uh, it was one great... one marvellous success, yeah. Mm, mm. I mean, it's not true that I don't miss it, you know. I mean, one does miss a success, and one misses, yes. you know, all those years ago, all the jollity of it all, yeah. Mm. But, I mean, I'm quite happy. Really. A fond memory, anyway. Lovely to see you again. <laughs> Congratulations on Medics. Always good to talk to Tom. And we didn't insult anybody except poor old John Thor. Right, coming next, the man with his finger on the pulse. That's Charles Metcalfe's guide to gourmet risotto. See you after the break. <laughs>